Hello guys and welcome to my channel. Now in today's video is a huge article video. I have a slight addiction to art supplies and I have walked quite a lot in the last month. So I'm going to showcase some of them today and talk about some of them as well. So I'm going to start with a few miscellaneous objects. I purchased some masking fluid brushes as I didn't have any applicators for any masking fluid and using normal brushes make the bristle all come up and stick together so we will give these a go see if they work I keep with brushes I purchased some watercolour brushes these are pro art watercolour brushes I got these off of the Jackson's Art website and I purchased these because my current one is starting to go a little bit thin I have noticed recently particularly the my big number six one and my number two over zero started to fray quite a lot from overuse so I purchased those to replace them next one I have purchased is some half pans I've purchased this for all the extra paint that I've bought and a few other pieces as well okay the next item I actually purchased today it was a very good find in my local art store. These, which is Spectrum Noir brush nibs. Now I have alcohol markers and brush nibs are hard to find cheaply. I found these at two pounds for free brush nibs, which is a very good price. So I have got a couple of packets of those. I might go back and clear out the rest of their supply. So it's a very good price. Uh, what else do I have? Got any more miscellaneous stuff before I yes. Also from my local art shop I have purchased some art boards. Now what these are is they are boards that you can paint on. They're a little bit like canvas boards, but they are all cardboard. Now I don't want to keep buying canvases as they are not cheap. And I usually paint on canvas paper. That doesn't really have any strength or structure to it, so it's difficult to sort of move the painting around. It's like a piece of paper, so it's very difficult. They also have one available in acrylic. They are the same. They are the same thing. They're just labelled differently, so you can use acrylics on these, and you can use oil on the acrylic boards as well. That one. Now another good find I found was some canvas boards. This come. These come from a shop in the UK called The Works. And this is a very good price, two pounds from down from four. So there are two in here, so that's a pound a piece, and they're really good by the looks of it. It says they're gesso primed already. I may just prime them as well. Right, so I'm going to move on to paint soon. I'm going to talk about a few mediums I've also bought. I purchased some granulation medium. For watercolor. Now I purchased this because I'm doing an experiment which, I'll, experiment which I will talk about later on and then another video which I'll get to in a bit. Now I've also purchased some acrylic paints. I've been looking at getting or trying acrylic paints for a little while because I want to know what they're like but I don't want to spend a lot of money on them. So let's see if I can fit this into the frame. Not quite. What you're looking at here is a set of acrylic paints by Schmincke. They're Schmincke Academy paints. They're eight tubes, eight different colours. So I'll just grab one out. Now I found this in sort of bits and bobs store really here in the UK. And there were two sets. There was a artist quality set and this set which is the Academy set. Now Schmincke's Academy line of watercolour and most other paint lines are very good. They're almost the same as their professional line just as pigment load per binder they were same price so I thought I'd get these as I'm not not tried them before so I thought I'd give them a go and see how they turned out each tube has 120 milliliters so very good value for money lots of paint lots to play with now sticking with the acrylics I got two acrylic mediums the first one I got was from the works as well, which is an acrylic retarder. What this does, it slows down the drying time of acrylics. 
because that's what's put me off before by my acrylics, which was that they dry in time, so they dry very quickly. Unlike watercolor, they don't reactivate when you add water to them. Once they've dried, once they dry, that's it. You have to paint over it, or it's stuck on there. So I thought that's to help working with it. And I also purchased a painting medium, acrylic painting medium. Yes, an acrylic painting medium. What this does is you mix it with your paint along with the water, and it, uh, and it makes the paint thinner, it allows you to paint easier with it, helps with flow. Uh, it's recommended with acrylic paint not to add just water to it, as it can weaken the bonds of the paint and make the paint chip off the like the canvas or surface you're painting on. So I got that. Now, I think that's it for all the other little bits and pieces. So now I'm going to move on to the vast amount of paint I purchased. There is a lot. So let's start. I'll start with this one. This is unmarked. This is a sample tube of Ultramarine Blue by Jackson's. It's their own brand line of artist colours. I purchased this because it was very cheap. It's five millilitres in here. It cost me about £1.50, I think it did. So it's quite good. The only downside is it's not like a tube. You can't just uncap it and squeeze it in. There's no information on this either. The pigment information on the packet. I have to look that up online, but I'm assuming it's the same as most Ultramarines. Next colour I purchased is Sennelier colour. This is Sennelier's uh, French Vermilion. Now I purchased a small palette of Sennelier paints to review. review it, the review is coming and in the palette there is this colour. And I really like this colour in the palette so I bought another tube to add to my main palette because I really do like this red. I'm not a big fan of red, so by saying that it does mean quite a lot. Let me just zoom in so you can see the paints a little bit better. There we go. Let's try that. A bit more. There we go. So I bought some Rembrandt paints. Rembrandt is a brand I purchased in my last haul. And I've enjoyed them, but the colours I chose last time weren't uh, colours I would use a lot. They were more sort of colours I would like to use, but they were more sort of things like New Gamboge, which doesn't feature a lot in most mixing. Most mixing would be the primaries. So bought a few colours I didn't already have from other brands, such as Cerulean Blue, Ultramarine Violet. Uh, which other one did I purchase? Was that the only one? Oh, there's one more. Uh, permanent red middle. I wanted to try a red from Rembrandt, like a true red. Last time I purchased a French Vermilion, and it wasn't very red. It's more orangey yellow rather than red. Let's see. There we go. That's a bit better. Some light. Uh, the next paints I purchased were from Old Holland, so I'll grab them out. The ones I purchased from Old Holland are Mars Yellow. And this is one, it's a bit like an yellow ochre. So I thought I purchased that to add to my collection. Uh, Flesh Ochre. Now this is one that I've been looking for for a while. Jackson's have always been out of stock of Flesh Ochre, so I purchased this from Cassart along with the other Holland colours. I really like old Holland colours, they're very bright and very vibrant colours. You get a lot of paint for what you pay, which is very good because it's a very expensive paint brand. The next one is Golden Baroque Red. And I purchased this colour as a recommendation. It was recommended on handprint.com. Now the guy who runs Handprint is not a fan of old Holland brand. They say the watercolors are not very good and very expensive compared to others, but this one, this color, is what he says he likes. So for somebody who doesn't like the brand in general, to say that they like a color must be quite a recommendation. And it is quite a nice color, it's a nice red-orange color. So I purchased that. Oh, I missed the paint. I also paint, purchased another paint from Rembrandt. 
This is the Azo yellow light. And I purchased this one in half pan because the, the tube was not available. However, the, pan, the, the tubes only fill about half pan and a half the paint, which is the downside of the Rembrandt paint brand. So that's it for those. Now I've got a few colours here. Oh no, I've missed one. I also purchased a Winsor & Newton one, Cobalt Turquoise Light. I purchased the turquoise because another YouTuber recommended it in one of their videos. They preferred it to the Old Holland brand. So I thought I'd try that to see what that's like. Now, I purchased another three tubes of watercolour paint. Now see if you can uh, guess the pattern here. Uh, Old Holland Manganese Blue Genuine. Uh, Wallace and Seymour Manganese Blue Genuine. Windsor and Newton Manganese Blue Hue. So what I've decided I was going to do is I was going to do a video on Manganese Blue. I purchased the pigment in manganese blue deep from old holland before and really like the color manganese blue genuine is a pb33 pigment and is a rare pigment and is running out worldwide and i thought i'd trial some of them see which one's the best which one's worth the money investing so it will be a video on that shortly the next thing i purchased was some more pigments as i want to get into more paint making and try and market my own pigments, my own paint even. So I bought a purchased a few colours. First one was yellow ochre, burnt sienna, Indian yellow, uh, ultramarine blue dark. Now this didn't come in this jar. I it came in a plastic, in a paper bag and it was very difficult to work with. So I poured it into a glass jar. And there's still half of it left in the bag. So there's quite a lot there for the price. Now those pigments were very cheap for what they for what they are and for how much there is. Uh, with those pigments it's probably cheaper to make your own rather than buy them. There's some pigments that are just cheaper to buy, but they're not for those ones. Now the next ones I purchased were Quinacridone and Scarlet. I wanted to make a red paint and this was the cheapest and the one I liked the most. So I thought I'd give that a go. And Indigo Genuine. Not many manufacturers make genuine indigo anymore. I think there's one or two at the most. The main reason is because it's not a very light fast pigment. It fades quite badly. So most don't make it. Most use synthetic. I think that might be everything in my art hall. Yes, I think it might be. <laughs> that was rather a lot. Over 10 minutes worth of art hall. That's a lot of paint that I purchased. So just line it all up. Now, as you can see, I definitely have a watercolor addiction. <laughs> so much watercolour. I will do an update video of us watching these new colours and see how they go. I also have the one that I did in my previous art haul still waiting to be released. It's on my laptop somewhere and I will upload it. Okay so I've got a little added bit here. Um, in between before uploading this art haul, Cass Art had a big online sale which included watercolour including the Old Holland line. And I'm a big fan of Old Holland watercolours, so I thought I'd um, pick up the deal. And then on top of that, once I finished buying the paints I wanted, I found out I was only about £10 short for the shipping, for the free shipping, so I bought a couple more just to get the free shipping. So I'm just going to go over those colours I purchased. I also purchased a um, Daniel Smith watercolour. So Daniel Smith one I purchased is... Quinacridone, quinacridone gold. Is that focusing? Not really. There we go. 
No, I don't put purchases because in liquid color recommended this color and said that it was genuine. However, that was only the whole tubes. Well, not whole tubes, the 15 milliliter tubes rather than the five. So there's that one. Now the old Holland colors I purchased were Scarlet Lake Extra, Caribbean Blue, Slaveninger Yellow Lemon, Old Holland Green Light, which one? Here we go, Slaveninger Green. Oh, and two more and ultramarine red pink and finally the brilliant pink now these two colors look very similar on camera however this is a very dark purple in the pan this is a very bright pink in the pan so it'll be interesting to see what they swatch out like so as normal thank you very much for watching please comment rate and subscribe if you have any questions please do ask me. I will be leaving a product list of everything that I purchased and where from in the description bar. Thank you very much. So until next time, bye.